Hello everyone, in this video we are going to talk about the next MELCs for exploratory electrical installation and maintenance, specifically L01 Select Electrical Measuring Tools and Instruments. Are you ready to learn? I hope that you are because this is an interesting topic. So. Let us start. For our objectives in today's lesson, first, identify objects or component to be measured. Second, choose test instrument to be used for a specific task. And lastly, listen attentively and participate in class discussion. Now, for the past two lessons, we have been talking about electrical installation and maintenance, but we haven't really tackled the purpose of this job, that of which is electricity. So, what then is electricity? I know that you have your own thoughts about this, so let us discover together what this is about. Electricity is the set of physical phenomena associated with the presence and motion of matter that has a property of electric charge. You have there some familiar terms that you have already the answer for yourself. But let us move forward and know more about electricity. We have this short video and I hope by watching this, we will be getting most of what this electricity is all about. Electricity is all around us and most of us use it every day, but do you really know what electricity is? To really understand electricity, you first have to start with an atom. Everything in the universe is made up of atoms. Let's look at this ant. We think of ants as being pretty small, but atoms are smaller, much, much smaller. Atoms are so small, in fact, that one ant is made up of too many atoms to count, more than a billion. If you take an object and keep breaking it down to smaller units, eventually you'll be left with only atoms, which we can call the building blocks of everything. Atoms have a couple of different parts. And a really important part of an atom is called an electron. Not all atoms have the same number of electrons. The number of electrons in an atom can change because electrons can move between atoms. Electricity is the movement, or flow of electrons from one atom to another. This flow of electrons is called current, electric current. Electrons can move in all materials, but they can move through some materials better than others. If electrons can move quickly and easily in a material, then that material is a conductor. A conductor is anything that allows electric current to flow from one point to another. The opposite of a conductor is an insulator. An insulator is a material that does not let electrons move well and doesn't conduct electricity. Have you ever seen the inside of a wire? The inside is usually made up of copper or another conductive metal while the outside is made of plastic an insulator. The copper wire helps the electrons flow while the plastic insulator helps keep the electricity from being wasted and prevents us from being shocked. To use electric current to power things, you have to create a complete pathway for the electric current to follow. This is called an electric circuit. 
An electric circuit is like a racetrack of conductive materials that let the electrons flow in a specific way. For example, let's try to light a light bulb. First, you need a power source, like a battery. Next, you need to connect wires to the battery, and finally, the light bulb. Presto! Just like that, the circuit has been completed and the light bulb lights up. To learn more about electricity and circuits, explore the Curiosity Machine. Now, that video was truly interesting. It made clear what electricity is all about, and it made mention about matter. Matter is anything that occupies space and has mass. It may be living or non-living things, tangible or intangible. It is made of very tiny, visible particles called atoms. Now, as mentioned in the video, an atom is a very, very tiny particle that cannot be seen by the naked eye. It is, by the way, the building block of any material in this universe. Going back to this atom, it has its smaller particles. We have the structure of an atom here. It is made up of three equally important particles. You have your protons or the positively charged particle. You have your neutron, which is the neutral. And lastly, the electrons or the negatively charged particles. And as mentioned in that video, there is no equal number of electrons from one atom to another. As electrons can flow, from one atom to another and this flow or transfer of electrons is called as the electric current thus we have the electricity now just like in that video electricity in order for it to move freely must have its race track and that race track is called as the electric circuit now there are certain parts of the electric circuit that we must know first you have the source and for example you have your battery now in order for electricity to flow it must have a line that of which in this example would be the wire and for the electricity to have its purpose it needs to have a load or a current consuming appliance or apparatus. In this example, you have your lamp. So, when you have these three parts, then there surely is the flow of electricity, the source, the line, and the load. Wow, electricity is something worth studying very interesting topic now that we know this concepts about electricity it's time to move forward to the measuring tools what exactly do we measure in electrical installation and maintenance measuring tools is anything used to make account of quantitative data such as weight length time or temperature Let's get to know these tools very well. You have your ruler, also known as the foot rule. It is a measuring tool used to measure length, width, and thickness of short flat object and in sketching straight lines. Then we have the wire gauge. It is used in determining the size of wires or conductors. The gauge ranges from 0 to 60 AWG or American Wire Gauge. The micrometer. It is used to measure the diameter of wires or conductors in circular mills. 
It can measure small and big sizes of wires and cables. The pull push rule. It is a measuring tool used to measure the length of an object in centimeters and inches. Test light. It is a pocket sized tool used to test the line wire or circuit if there is current in it. It may have two probes or a screwdriver like, but both have a light indicator. Now here comes the much more complicated tools and instruments used in measuring. You have your ammeter. It is an instrument used to measure the amount of electrical current intensity in a circuit. The unit of measure is ampere. So remember everyone that when you are measuring electrical current intensity then the unit of measure is ampere or is reflected as letter A. Likewise, the clamp meter has the same purpose. Have you heard of the word voltage? If you do, then the voltmeter is right for use. Voltmeter is an instrument used to measure electrical pressure or voltage. The unit of measure of volt is letter V. This is connected across or parallel to a circuit. Again, take note, if we are measuring voltage, then the unit of measure is volt represented by the letter V. And then we have lastly the voltometer or the VOM, also known as the multi tester. This is used to measure the voltage, resistance, and current of a circuit. Remember these three concepts voltage or the electrical pressure, resistance or the force that helps control the flow of electricity. And lastly, you have your current or the flow of electricity. Now, all of this are measured. It is connected in parallel or series with the circuit depending on what to measure. I do believe that tools, equipment, and instrument must be taken care of. So, let us find out the ways in which we can perform the task properly. Now taking care of your tools is as simple as following these steps or reminders. First, keep tools in a safe toolbox or tool bag. Second, clean tools immediately after use. Wipe it with a cloth, damp with water oil once in a while to avoid rusting or corrosion. Third, avoid dropping of the instruments. Fourth, know the proper use of an instrument before using. Fifth, use tools for their intended purpose only. And lastly, keep instruments from getting wet to prevent damage. Now, let's take care of our equipment. Without this equipment, there will be tasks that will be difficult for us to perform. Let's follow these steps, these reminders, carefully. First, handle the instrument carefully. Their moving parts are sensitive and should be handled with extra care. 
Second, choose the correct meter for the right job. Take note of the three concepts that we have learned. You have your current, you have your resistance, and you have your voltage. Third, use an instrument that suits the measure to be taken. If it is voltage, then use the voltmeter. If it is the ampere or the current, then use the ammeter. And if it is for resistance, you can use the ohmmeter or multi-tester. Fourth, read the information attached on the plates, if any, regarding the ranges and uses of the instruments. Fifth, make sure that the load and their insulation are in good condition and are properly connected to the terminals to avoid hazards. And lastly, maintain cleanliness while performing a test. We don't want to work on a place that is crowded with stuff. It should be neat and tidy so that we can easily look for what we need and we can perform our task easily. Wonderful! We have learned so many things today. I hope that you have enjoyed today's lesson and make sure to make use of that learning in your daily life. If you have any questions regarding the topic that we have discussed or would like to learn more about other related topics to this, please comment it down below. And don't forget to like and share this video to your friends so that they can also take note and learn of this. Subscribe to my YouTube channel, Sir D. Thank you everyone for joining me in today's lesson and have a great day ahead.